Hey, what's up guys? Huawei sub-brand Honor announced the Honor 20 and the Honor 20 Pro a while ago now, and the Honor 20 has finally reached the market. The Pro version is still not there, but we wanted to take a look at these two phones, compare them, and maybe answer the question, which one should you get? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and this is our combined Honor 20 and Honor 20 Pro review. The Honor 20 and Honor 20 Pro are quite similar devices, with only a few differences between them. They're both bound to turn some heads on the street thanks to their stunning glass build. We have ours in the sapphire, blue, and phantom black colors, and the glossy finish scatters the light to create a 3D gradient effect, almost like a hologram. The Pro version looks a little different. Its back curves into the aluminum frame, whereas the regular Honor 20 is more flat. You can also notice that the camera module is wider on the Pro. Although the phones feel sturdy and look premium, just keep in mind that there is no water or dust resistance with either model. Going to the front side, we see both phones with an almost full screen design, with the exception of the hole punch cutout for the selfie cam. Both have basically the same screen, a 6.26 inch IPS LCD with a 1080p resolution. You do have the option to mask the cutout with a black bar, if you want to, or you can find a suitable wallpaper to do that for you. These displays look good, content is sharp, and brightness is decent, though the Honor 20 Pro can get just a bit brighter. Color accuracy is quite good on both displays, but at this price point, we can't help but wish that we got an OLED screen instead of an LCD. Black levels are just average here. As an LCD, you don't have the option for an always-on display, but you do have a notification LED to let you know if you need to check your phone. It can flash in red or green. For audio, both phones have a bottom-facing loudspeaker. Each has very good loudness, but if you turn up the volume, you end up with some ringing distortion. If you want to plug in headphones, neither phone has a 3.5mm jack, but you do get an adapter in the box. Audio quality through headphones is just average, but stereo separation is better on the Honor 20 than on the Pro version. One difference between the two models is the amount of built-in storage space. This isn't expandable via microSD. You get 128 gigs on the 20 and 256 gigs on the Honor 20 Pro. You can wake up and unlock either phone with a side-mounted fingerprint reader, which doubles as a power button if you click it down. It's a bit different from what we're used to from Huawei, but it's one of the fastest readers we've seen. All it needs is a light touch. You can also use face unlock to wake up the phone, though this option isn't as secure. Both the Honor 20 and the Honor 20 Pro run on Magic UI 2.1 on top of Android 9 Pie. Depending on how the US ban situation plays out, you may not get future Android updates on these phones, but you will still get security updates and access to Google Play services regardless. By default, apps are kept on the home screen, not in an app drawer, though you can opt for one in settings. Also, while there is a Google Newsfeed panel on the leftmost side of the home screen, you can choose to disable it if you want and you can use gestures to navigate instead of the on-screen keys. It's the same system we've seen before from Huawei, and it's quite intuitive. Except that on some apps, swiping from the edge of the screen to go back may sometimes accidentally open up a menu instead. Both the Honor 20 and the Honor 20 Pro run on Huawei's flagship Karen 980 chipset. The Pro version gets 8 gigs of RAM, while the regular model has 6. Unfortunately, we weren't able to run our normal benchmarks on these phones due to software limitations, probably because of their pre-production status but performance feels quite fast and smooth, and the Pro version doesn't heat up as much thanks to a more advanced cooling system. The Honor 20 Pro has a slightly larger battery than the regular version, and it did great in our proprietary battery life tests, scoring an endurance rating of 104 hours. The Honor 20, on the other hand, wasn't quite as impressive with a score of 89 hours, but it's still quite good. The difference came not so much from screen on time, but from increased power draw and standby. Both phones come with a 22.5 watt charger in the box, and charging speed is about the same. In both cases, we were able to charge from zero to around 50% in 30 minutes. The Honor 20 has a quad camera setup. There's a 48 megapixel main cam with a quad bayer filter, a 16 megapixel ultra wide cam, a two megapixel camera for macro shots, and a two megapixel depth sensor. In contrast, the Honor 20 Pro replaces that depth sensor with a telephoto cam. Also, its main camera has OIS, unlike the Honor 20s, and it has a brighter aperture. In daylight, photos come out in 12 megapixels. Shots from the Honor 20 Pro look great. They're nicely sharp and have natural colors and impressive dynamic range. The photos from the regular Honor 20 are great as well. Quality-wise, it's pretty hard to tell the difference. 
you have the option to shoot in 48 megapixels too. And you can give these shots a boost with something called AI Ultra Clarity Mode. These photos take much longer to process, and you need very good light. You can sometimes get very nice results, though it is quite inconsistent. Ultra wide shots from both the Honor 20 and the Honor 20 Pro are just average. Colors are washed out looking. Dynamic range is alright though, and the distortion correction makes sure that you don't end up with curved buildings. Only the Pro version has a telephoto cam, and shots from this are quite similar in quality to the main cam. There's good dynamic range, nice colors, and no loss in detail at 3x zoom. Even at 5x hybrid zoom, the camera was able to deliver surprisingly good photos. If you zoom with the Honor 20, all you get is a digital crop from the main camera. With a dedicated lens for macro shots, the Honor 20 and Honor 20 Pro can take those close-up photos which are tough or impossible for most phones. The detail is good for a 2 megapixel unit, but you do have to get close to the subject as the fixed focus distance is just 4 centimeters. Let's take a look at the portraits. These turn out surprisingly good. You get natural skin tones and plenty of detail. The edge detection is quite nice, even with a more complex background. You can also take zoomed in portraits with a telephoto cam on the Pro version, and if you have plenty of light, these look great. Here's a comparison with a digitally zoomed portrait from the Honor 20. At night, performance with the Honor 20 Pro's main camera is stellar. Quality is quite similar to the Huawei P30, with good exposure, low noise, good detail, and nicely preserved highlights. If you turn on the night mode, you get a sharper image. It also improves the dynamic range of the photos, and reduces noise even further. On the Honor 20, however, the low light image quality isn't as great as on the Pro, probably because of the lack of OIS and the narrower aperture. There's enough resolved detail and balanced exposure, but the noise levels are a bit higher than we expected. If you turn on the night mode on the Honor 20, it does improve the overall exposure, and the dynamic range gets a boost as well. However, the images weren't impressive detail-wise. Using the ultra-wide camera at night isn't recommended. Without sufficient light, you get noisy pictures with mediocre detail on both phones. But if you turn on the night mode, you get improved exposure and dynamic range, and lower noise, but the result still isn't tack sharp. You can use the Honor 20 Pro's telephoto camera at night too, and we also recommend using it with the night mode, as it reduces noise and brings out a lot more detail. Both the Honor 20 and the Honor 20 Pro have a 32 megapixel f2.0 front facing camera with fixed focus. Selfies look equally great, with nice sharpness and detail and natural skin tones. Dynamic range is above average too. Videos can be recorded from the main and ultra wide cameras in up to 4K at 30fps on both phones, and you can also shoot through the Pro's telephoto cam. There is electronic stabilization and OIS too in the case of the Pro. The Honor 20 Pro's main camera does a good job in 4K. It delivers wide dynamic range, nice contrast, no visible noise, and punchy colors. Its ultra-wide angle cam is still nice, but there is less detail around the edges, and the dynamic range is a bit narrower. On the Honor 20, the main camera's 4K footage has good dynamic range, nice contrast, and low noise, but the level of detail seems to be a bit less than on the Honor 20 Pro. The same can be said for its ultra-wide footage. Is comparable to the Honor 20 Pro's except for the resolved detail, which is just average. Videos from the telephoto camera on the Honor 20 Pro have a natural rendition and well-balanced sharpness, but you can expect less detail and slightly darker exposure compared to the main camera. So that's the Honor 20 and the Honor 20 Pro. They give you a lot of the same great features, an eye-catching glass build, great performance, nice battery life, and a blazing fast fingerprint reader. You are missing a couple of things here though. I wish there was a headphone jack, and some people would rather have an OLED screen instead of an IPS LCD. So of these two, which one is the better deal? Well the Pro version has slightly better battery life, a telephoto cam and better camera quality at night, double the storage, and more RAM. But it will cost up to 100 bucks more when it becomes available. It's all up to you and your own needs, but regardless of which one you choose, you'll be getting a great phone. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.